Hello guys, Art Thieves here. In this video, I'll show you key stages of modeling a stylized helicopter bot in 3ds Max. I want this guy to stay below 20k polygons. I start modeling from a box primitive and then to besmooth it, so I can get the desired initial shape and also get some kind of square on top of the model. I split the robot's body into two parts that are connected by a flat surface. This will help us a lot, shall we decide to use automated re topology. The drawback of this method is the fact that we won't be able to use subdivision later on. On the next stage, I prepare the top part of the robot for boolean operations. I block out all elements that I will add to it or cut out from it. Make sure to add all of them before using automated re topology. Otherwise, it will be harder for you to add them later on. I place side cylinders by using the object paint tool. Also, I drive them slightly into the robot's hull to make sure they intersect properly. I repeat the process for each element that will intersect with robot's body. Make sure to not to apply too many chamfers to objects at this stage. Also, I copy side cylinders instead of just using the symmetry tool for automated re topology to consider their location. I don't give these objects much detail so far, because I'll work on them once automated re topology is complete and they are integrated into a single object. In order to avoid any confusion, remember to delete all parts of unwanted geometry before you retopologize anything. Now I pick the right amount of iterations for my planned geometry to look properly, apply some manual fixes, and finally use the symmetry tool. I'm not going for some flawless optimization here, but if I would, I'd try to make my polygons as square and equal-sided as possible. I manipulate some edges here by using Flow Connect tool and moving vertices with edge constraint enabled. I use Ring Selection and Collapse tool to get rid of some unwanted topology that appeared after I used the Symmetry tool. At this stage, I also get rid of all the unwanted edges. Some hard edges look a lot better if you give them a single chamfer. Once again, make sure to remove all the unwanted topology that may appear in process. I have created a camera lens here from an uneven result of using a bevel tool. In fact, that was a terrible idea, and it got fixed later on. I've swapped out this deformed piece with a proper hemisphere. The hole in the top was created by using a Spherify modifier and aligning all of its vertices to a flat surface. On the next phase, I repeat most processes on the bottom part of the robot. Also, I pick the right amount of outer topology iterations, so it gets the same amount of edges as its corresponding top part. When working on some elements that are not aligned to one of the axes, make sure to switch your coordinate system to local. There isn't much I can comment here. I use polygon modeling, shell modifier, swift loop, and give my rocket nozzle a couple of chamfers. I model woods by using Nerm's modifier to get the proper initial shape. We would definitely use this method if we were starting to model a car or a ship. A 
Remember to fix the topology a little bit if you chamfer some internal elements. I'm not making an ideal topology here, obviously, but I want my shading to look properly. Should you want to achieve a much better optimization, remember to avoid trees and try to make your polygons as square as possible. As you can see, I made this boot pretty small compared to the rest of the robot. When working on stylized objects, don't be afraid to make them really thick. This will preserve the style and also give your model cartoony look. Our robot's legs are made from splines. I set the middle vertice to smooth. Using some rubber rings instead of mechanical knees makes the model easier to animate, at least in my opinion. If you want to optimize your model, these parts can obviously be baked. I model all details because they don't add too much unwanted geometry, and also because I want to make some rubber connectors much bigger than the rest. Once again, I detach all intersecting parts, blend them together, fix their topology just a little bit, and attach them back, for I make this model as some kind of a statue, and want all of its parts, but rotors, to be a single object. If you want to make turbines in a lazy fashion we used before, by relying on automated retopology, I'd start by blending a cylinder out of its top side, retopologizing it, and working on that prefab. At this point, I use only some basic tools – inset, bevel, extrude, and chamfer. Avoid making small details or objects that are much more detailed than other parts of the robot. The style is what makes the model. I make the robot's hands the same way I made its legs. If I was preparing it for animation, I'd model it in typos, which would also be easier to unwrap later on. I model rotors as separate objects, so they can rotate in some simple scene. Nothing new here, as I use automated retopology and apply symmetry two times, rotating mirror in process. I create a single blade by using nothing else but polygon modeling. I bend it a little bit, center it to the middle of the rotor, and copy it three times, rotating each copy by 90 degrees. I increase the amount of polygons for it to bend correctly. Finally, I connect my blade to the rotor. I am going to give all blades a single overlapping UV chuck. If you want to bend them at different angles, I recommend doing so after you are done with unwrapping. I repeat the same process on the rear rotor. Its blades will also have overlapping UVs. As I prepare the robot for unwrapping, I remove all symmetrical parts from it, leaving just one of each for the purpose of unwrapping and subsequent copying. Thanks for watching, guys! If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more stylized content. And most importantly, have a great day!